Hi everyone, Wojtek here and welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be another good tutorial, or maybe not, but I still think you're gonna learn something today. So, a few weeks ago, I decided to make my beautiful forest scene from Godot 3.3, this time in famous Godot 4, or at least in alpha version, because you know. As you may suspect, there are many, and many new challenges, so I'm gonna talk about them, or at least I will try to briefly mention everything interesting. Starting from terrain, as there is currently no plugin for this, procedural object placement, and my never ending implementation of this feature. And yeah, spoiler alert, it's still not finished, but it's getting better. And of course, other things like vegetation assets and the new stuff in Godot 4. So let's take a look at the scene. So yeah, after this breathtaking demo scene, uh, let's go to the more technical details. So yeah, let's start with terrain. As I said at the beginning of this video, uh, there is currently no plugin for this in Godot 4. So I had to do everything from scratch. So this is my solution. Uh, I basically made a mesh in Blender and then um, I decided to divide it into um, you know, sectors, so occlusion cooling could work. Um, yeah, and everything other than that is a shader magic. So, height map uh, is used for a displacement, and actually, I'm using Material Maker for generating those textures. And um, big amount of them is procedural, uh, you know, except the height map, which is actually a real world data uh, with some roads and other maps are generated. So you can see in the animation how does it work. Uh, as for coloring, uh, so basically for a fragment shader, I'm using a tree planner material, so my rocks uh, and grass is looking correct at every angle. And uh, of course I'm using some gradient uh, textures, so I can, uh, based on slope, remap those, you know, transitions between grass and rocks on the mountains. Uh, I can manipulate so hard, hard or soft is the edge. Uh, for the ground I also use a noise uh, texture, uh, so it's a word space texture and uh, it's used to blend between the smooth and forest ground uh, textures um, and uh, of course to you know avoid um, this uh, very visible repetition a stochastic texture uh, technique uh, is used and uh, you can believe me it's uh, looking uh, really, really, you know, better comparing to the standard repetition. Uh, and uh, yes, there are also some settings for water, and uh, there is no water currently in this demo, but there was, so this is the screenshots. And yeah, I think that's uh, mostly everything about uh, uh, textures of uh, terrain. Oh yeah, and one last thing about, um, you know, some more technical details is that I used a normal map scaling. So, as you can see, those um, mountains in the background actually using, um, you know, scaled up uh, normal map texture. 
So when you move close up, you can see uh, there is a very you know, prominent uh, a barrier between the scale of these normal maps, but you can blend it to hide it better. I just didn't bother with it. So, let's move to more interesting stuff. I mean, placement. And yeah, so biomes uh, in my demo are actually uh, resources, and I mean, Godot resources. So each biome consists of a density map, uh, which is, you know, in word space and also generated in Material Maker, and list of objects with some parameters like, you know, scale, uh, density in the biome, or other things like uh, movement on the y-axis or visibility ranges. And uh, those biomes are used in the GPU placement node. So yeah, I know there is no GP usage and I actually changed the name in the last, you know, time because yeah, it's not using GPU, so I think it's misleading, um, but uh, it's working pretty well. Uh, so the idea is that I use a grid of chunks and each of, each of these chunk is like, you know, 32 by 32 meters and consists of multiple multi meshes. Um, so it's basically uh, information for biomes so of, uh, of which multi meshes is which uh, object. Uh, and this um, chunk uh, can swap uh, meshes for imposters and, of course, uh, is uh, uh, uploaded and updated by a biome dispatcher. So how does it work? Um, yeah, so when the player moves, uh, the chunks actually are not moving uh, with the player as it was with the terrain. Uh, the chunks are removed from the scene and uh, added new uh, in front of the, you know, uh, the, the player. And uh, yeah, I'm using object pooling, so maybe they're not del deleted entirely, uh, but uh, they uh, basically are remade from you know scratch uh, the information they're keeping. Uh, so before those chunks are re-added, um, a dispatcher um, is presented with the list uh, of the new you know places where it should calculate uh, those biomes. And uh, this list um, is actually, you know, uh, put in the another thread, uh, which based on those information um, and some other maps like hate map, is calculating offsets um, and using stencil maps, for example, for uh, calculating correct density of objects. Uh, and those things are, you know, uh, outputted in the, you know, multi-mesh friendly uh, buffers. So uh, this whole dispatcher thread could be easily swapped with a GPU solution. Uh, so yeah, uh, I mean, compute shaders, uh, which was uh, the original idea. And moving on to more visual side of this demo, I mean, vegetation assets. So basically I will start from small things, so grass. And grass is mostly a vertex shader thing. Uh, so we have an ambient wind animation and I think it's really pleasing, uh, you know, this eight shapes that it creates. Uh, the grass is uh, distance uh, blended with ground, so the alpha cutout is actually changing, so the uh, transition is really smooth and there is no pop-up of chunks which are generated before the player because you know grass is really expensive in games and uh, the grass shader is actually using a height map uh, to offset its um, per pixel per vertex um, position uh, because um, grass mesh is a one meter by one, one meter uh, and uh, if I place um, this uh, mesh uh, by the center of the object in the height map, uh, there could be some blades or planes of the mesh which would be floating inside the air or will be inside a mountain. Uh, so this uh, trick uh, allows us to omit those situations altogether. 
And for the bushes and small trees, there is only a basic leaf animation uh, with ambient white. So let's move to the larger trees, which are more interesting in my opinion. So I use the uh, leaves and trunk animation. So it's uh, ambient white and directional white. So in the future, you could create some world space map uh, with the wind uh, directions and create more believable environment this way. Uh, of course, vertex color are used uh, in animation to you know <clears throat> make it more interesting. And for the optimization, I used imposters for those large trees. You probably can see them clearly. Uh, yeah, but I think this is uh, good enough for this demo. Moving on to Godot 4 improvements. So yeah, the volumetric fog is the one thing that I'm using uh, a lot in my demo scene. It's great for things like creating atmosphere for the forest and uh, actually it think, I think it looks a lot better than standard fog from Godot 3. Uh, I also use fog volumes and they are great, you know, to create some special places in your games uh, and create another different atmosphere. So they are here and this is an example. And another amazing thing in Godot 4, uh, which I think is very often omitted, is the new ambient occlusion. So please just take a look with the grass with and without it. There is no comparison to the old one in Godot 3.3. Same with the shadows, even the lowest settings without soft shadows, Godot 4 uh, yes, just uh, brings uh, immersive uh, quality incre increase comparing to the previous release. And there is also famous SDFGI or Sign Distance Field Global Illumination, <laughs> which doesn't really make it pronounced any easier. So I didn't use it in my scene. Um, I think uh, it's really nice if you have some closed rooms inside the house and you have one window which windows can, uh, which light comes in. Um, but for this older scene, I just added a second directional light to you know uh, added this a little ambient bounce and it's looking pretty decent without any performance costs. Um, yeah, and uh, there are other smaller things like alpha to coverage, which is great, but really expensive if you consider that you need to use MSSA uh, to enable it. Uh, so in the end, I couldn't use it because uh, of performance cost. And uh, let's not forget about automatic LOD. Uh, which drastically improves the performance and I actually used it a lot in my scene. And yeah, in the end I want to add some post-mortem notes. So, um, firstly, I think it's worth mentioning that um, you need to consider or have some kind of polygon and memory budgets uh, and some constraints for those kinds of things. Uh, I mean open world games or at least uh, systems like that uh, because I didn't do that. Uh, the optimization phase was really problematic because you know I didn't want to cut some quality and I didn't know what can be changed because I didn't set up some constraints at the beginning of this um, uh, demo creation. Uh, another thing, I think it would be really nice if the Godot could add some kind of data streaming uh, because um, performance hit from those large scenes is really big. So if you load all data in the highest quality, it will be really costly on VRAM and probably performance. Um, Another nice feature we could have, or maybe it could be even implemented, uh, but I didn't try, is virtual, virtual texturing. Um, basically, splat uh, map shaders, uh, which are used for the terrain, uh, are really expensive. And uh, the more texture I use, uh, the slower it gets. And I had to disable shadows of the terrain in the end. So this could be really, really helpful feature. Uh, some things, uh, some calculations could be moved to GPU and uh, this is actually possible with Godot 4. Um, I just didn't have time and uh, yeah, those projects took a lot longer than I expected. 
so it could help, uh, for example, with this placements, uh, because with the lumber, larger number of chunks, it's getting really slow. And uh, yeah, MSAA uh, is expensive, so you probably use Snow anti-aliasing or FXAA. Uh, so yeah, this one doesn't really look good uh, on 1080p screens, so probably you will go with the first uh, option. Um, and the, the last thing uh, I think is really worth mentioning is uh, performance. Um, the performance is really crap after export. I'm not sure if it's uh, my project, if it's, there is some kind of error. Yeah, there's a lot of errors, uh, but um, uh, after exporting it, um, basically my FPS counter is halved. So no matter the screen size, I, I just can't get over like 30, 50 FPS. So this is pretty bad. And yeah, I think that's all. And if you have, you know, any questions, just leave a comment. Uh, please, you know, like, you know what to do. And yeah, see you in the next video.